speakers will go out about that. So that, so this morning, Jackie Callow's giving our talk. And, and as I said before, some of you will know Jackie very well. She's been around for um, over 40 years um, and is, has been my teacher and was in Manchester at that seminal time in the 70s when, you know, summer took off and, and Lance was taking lots of classes. And Jackie's still in Manchester, still doing lots of classes and has done over the years. And this morning, um, we've got a, a talk um, on Abhidhamma. Um, and it's Chicharuni. I've been practicing the word, what is Abhidhamma? So um, over to Jackie and uh, we'll find out the answer to the question, maybe. You never know. Thank you. Hi, well, good morning, everybody. It's very nice to see all these smiley faces. Um, so um, for some reason, this seemed like a good thing to talk about. So we'll see how we go. Um, I know it's a topic that some people got the whole range, really, from people who know nothing, maybe, or very little, to people who know lots and lots more than me. So, um, well, anyway, it'll be as it will be. So um, this um, image was one which... Um, occurred to me as, as um, a good illustration to go with this, but I'll, I'll come back to that um, in a few minutes. So we'll, we'll have a look at the next one. Okay, so this is basics really, maybe, certainly for a lot of people, but maybe not everybody. So we have this Pali word Tipitaka, which um, I think is usually translated as um, three baskets, the three baskets of the teachings of the Buddha. And those three are Vinaya, Sutta and Abhidhamma. So the Vinaya is, uh, lays out all the rules of life and conduct for the Sangha, for the, for the monks and the nuns, um, all sorts of things. I know there are, you know, the listed number of rules, but I believe there's all sorts of things beyond that. And also apparently lots of stories about how those rules came to be um, included. So that's the Vinaya. And then <coughs> if you've looked at any um, Buddhist text, then sutta is probably the most likely thing that you will have um, encountered. Uh, there's lots and lots uh, within that um, basket the, the, of the suttas. There's lots and lots of different texts, um, well-known ones like uh, the middle length sayings and um, so on and a whole lots and lots of collections of suttas, which um, I think the word possibly means thread or it's associated with something that's been heard, I think the word is. And they're, they're, they are collections of descriptions of occasions when, um, Mostly the Buddha has been teaching, but sometimes other, other um, arahats, for example, um, is, are included as well. And normally it's given, they, they're just given as, um, they start off by describing the occasion, the place, and uh, who's there perhaps. And usually somebody there has come to ask, the Buddha a question and then he responds to that question or questions yeah. and so there's teachings about many many things uh, within the um, within the suttas. Um, the Abhidhamma is um, a bit different from that. Um, if you've um, done a sort of chanting from our chanting book you will have actually encountered quite likely certainly some suttas and um, there's some Abhidhamma in there as well so if nowhere else you may have encountered some Abhidhamma in, in the chanting book. Okay so just to look at um, 
the Abhidhamma. Uh, there are these, the Abhidhamma is, comes in these seven texts, these seven books, the Dhammasangani, the Vibhanga, the Dhatukata, the Pukalapanyati, Kataratu, Yamaka and Mahapatana. And again, referencing the chanting book, which is such a good source of all sorts of things. Um, there's extracts from the Dhammasangani in the chanting book. There's um, something from the Mahapatana about the Pachayas in the chanting book. Um, I can't remember if there's any from anywhere, anywhere else, any of the others, but certainly we have encountered some of the Abhidhamma in the chanting book. Now within these seven books, um, the Dhamma Sangani, the first one, kind of lays out in many ways the basis for all the rest. And, and the other books in different ways work on uh, what has been laid out in the Dhamma Sangani in different kinds of ways. Um, analyzing, investigating, exploring in different directions. And some would say culminating in the Mahapatana, the, the, um, the last one, where um, I think Rajit made a reference to it last week, that it's, if you, if you include all the repetitions, that it's absolutely vast. Yeah. Normally when you have a text, there's quite a few dot dot dots but a really vast text about um all to do with how one thing or some things are conditions for other things to arise um but we'll focus we're going to focus mo mostly on the dhamma sangani um i might just mention people may have encountered the um I think it's called the Compendium of Abhidhamma, the Abhidhamata Sangaha, which is a sort of, um, has, it's a collection. So in one book, a kind of um, overview of, of material from all the books of the Abhidhamma. And then of course, um, people, some people are familiar with the Visuddhimagga, which is a commentary from about the fifth century AD. Uh, um, a lot of which is based on on this. So, before we, um, all right, um, let me stop that, stop share. So, before we, um, or I go on to say a bit more about these, um, I thought it would be um, good to just um, refer to what's traditionally, some of the things which are traditionally said about the Abhidhamma. Um, and um, traditionally it's said that uh, all, at the time of the enlightenment of the Buddha, while he was sat beneath um, or was near the Bodhi tree, for a period of, he spent a period of seven weeks following the time of the enlightenment in the vicinity of the Bodhi tree. Um, and in that time, uh, or it was during that time that the seven books of the Abhidhamma came to be during those seven weeks, um, which is a rather lovely story. And um, thinking about it, or trying to, which is perhaps not so easy, if, if, if one even attempts to consider what that time, how that time would have been for that person, then um, apart from, you know, such a powerful, powerful time, given his commitment to find a um, a way to freedom um, for all beings, um, as well as himself, then one can easily imagine a time of um, 
um, looking back, if that's the right word, or a sense of all that had led up to that moment and a consideration of, of what, from that point, from that vantage point, which you just reached, um, of looking back on to see what what were the things that were useful, given the commitment to, to for all beings to find freedom, to look back at all that he'd learned, all that he'd done, and see what, what was there that was um, going to help people what would be maybe the basis for what he was going to teach I'm sure it wasn't quite like that but you I can kind of get a sense that that would have been um, an important thing at that time during those seven weeks um, it's also said that um, he went I don't know if it was then I can't remember but he went up to one of the heaven worlds the Tusa to heaven. And the first person he said to have taught the Abhidhamma to is his, um, was his mother, who was residing in the Tusa to heaven. And the Tusa to heaven is um, one of six heaven worlds that are described. And the name means um, the heaven of those who are delighted. Um, and not just happy because the level below the Tusa to heaven is the heaven of beings who are happy. So this is a bit more than just happy, this is delighted. So in my mind, um, I kind of feel that um, maybe the heaven of those who are happy, that seems something very um, heart-based, feeling-based to be happy. But to be delighted, it's as if the mind is both the heart and the mind are happy. So something to do with both the heart and mind being glad and joyous together. Anyway, that's my sort of sense of the, um, perhaps the Tussa to heaven. Um, and the, I'll just go back to um, the Tussa to heaven. No, or an image of so it looks very to me very happy and delighted and beautiful so that seems a good place for the Abhidhamma to start um, and it's also said that um, the Buddha subsequently taught it to one of the chief Arahats Sarikutta who then presumably taught um, other people as well so those are the some of the traditional things that are said about the Abhidhamma. So we will reluctantly leave the Tusa to heaven, maybe. So we have these three baskets and the seven books. So um, to try and describe um, something of what is um, different about the Abhidhamma. I'm just going to go to the, um, yeah. Okay, so here we have uh, page 11 from page 11 of the chanting book, the Mangala Sutta. So this is an example of um, a Sutta. And we have the, as we're saying before, the occasion at the, at the beginning being stated. Um, the place, um, a being, a deva in this case, um, coming to ask Buddha um, a question about blessings, about mangalas. And there's the Buddha answers um, in terms of gods and men and things with which we are familiar, safety, fools, wise, um, places, crafts, um, family, uh, jobs, uh, ways of acting in the world, um, worldly ups and downs. So very much in terms of um, uh, the kind of things that we are familiar with and can relate to. Um, 
Now, the Abhidhamma, uh, if you haven't encountered it, does, doesn't work like that. So, um, if we go back to... Uh, this is the, um, the word that was part of the title, Chicherini. And um, you can perhaps see at the side that it's, it's a word composed of the, the four Pali words, Chitta, Chittasaka, Rupa and Nibbana. And I think it's used sometimes as a mantra. And these four, um, Chitta, Chittasaka, Rupa and Nibbana, are called the four Paramata Dhammas. And this tra is translated as something like um, ultimate reality. So that it's said that ultimately, these are what exist. And the kind of ways that we um, experience the world, talk about the world in terms of people and things and places and so on, is, is in the world of conventional reality that we all understand and share. And as in the um, Mangala Sutta and the other suttas. So that's the Buddha teaching in relation to our the world that we can relate to. Now with the Abhidhamma, the teaching in the Abhidhamma is in terms of these four. Um, so we have the word um, chitta, um, which gets, we haven't really got a word in English for chitta, because it means the, the translators use the words, um, and not only the translators, of mind and also heart, um, and, and other things as well, sometimes consciousness. Um, but in the, um, in the Dhamma Sangani, for the different words, um, that occur, they give what's called a register, sort of um, synonyms. And amongst those for Chitta is the word heart. So it's, you know, it's something that's actually there in the text. So, um, and then we have Chittasakas, which it's not easy to, to give a um, sensible word for them, but anyway, I've, It'll be easier when we look at some examples, but these, I call them qualities of the chitta. And then rupa, materiality, and nibbana, um, the unconditioned. So, um, I think, let me just... So, why, I suppose there is a question of about why um, this is done. Maybe we'll come on to that in a minute. Now let's do the next. Let's have a just look through this. Okay, so a little bit more about chitta. So, um, mind and heart. It's also something to do with awareness. Um, so, chitta is always associated with an object. So, it's always aware of something um, all the time, different things. Um, so what it, what it would be aware of are um, the things we've mentioned already. It could be another chitta or um, one of the um, qualities of the, the mind. Um, but also we are conscious of being aware of um, uh, sights and sounds and thoughts uh, and things which in Abhidhamma terms are called um, panyati or concepts as in people so we might be aware of a person so there we, we're aware of, of something so all the different things that the million million things that go through our minds from the time we're born till the time that we die of you know, huge amounts of things. And all of those are known by chitta, but the chitta is changing all the time. So it's, I can't remember the exact figure now, but it's something like 
thousands are said to happen in the time of a finger snap. Um, so it's something that's just changing all the time, but we're not aware of it. But always this knowing of uh, something, awareness of something, big, small, whatever. Um, something that's uh, being... So there's, there's um, a relationship all the time between this mind, heart, awareness and something else, which uh, might be a previous thought or chitta, or you know, that we'll perhaps look a bit further on. So chittasikas, they, um, so I should have said as well, the chitta always arise, is said to arise with um, a whole collection of these chittasikas. Now, um, there, I've mentioned um, there, the third one down, examples of chittasikas, so feeling, so we can be, um, uh, have um, a pleasant or uh, unpleasant or neutral feeling present. The roots, things like greed, hate and delusion are all chittasikas and their opposites, non-greed, non-hate, non-delusion. And faculties, uh, the, uh, the five, for example, the five faculties, which we talk about in relation to the practice, faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, these are all chattasakas. Um, and we'll, in a bit, we'll look at um, some more things like the hindrances and um, the jhana factors, the taka vichara and so on. These are all chittasikas and they, they arise with, they're said to arise with the chitta and so they describe it, they, they give it form if that's the right thing. Um, um, and there are, there are um, different ways uh, people try to, to give an um, analogy for the relationship between the chitta and chittasika. I mean, I remember a very early one was talking about the hand and the fingers, um, the hand being the chitta and the fingers being the chittasakas. But I think really the palm has to be a chittasaka as well, really. It's like that coming together of all these different um, qualities, like... Um, um, goodwill and a good feeling and a faculty of mindfulness, for example, and all the others make up, kind of make up the chitta, um, which is the, the sort of the knowing bit in all of that. Uh, okay. And then rupa, materiality. Now, the, the Abhidhamma doesn't really describe materiality in the way that um, science does. So for a start, it's very focused on the materi materiality of the body um, because um, all of this, well, all the Buddhist teachings are, um, are there because um, they are something which help us to find freedom. So although other things may be interesting, all sorts of things can be interesting. Here, the, the intention is, is that. So, um, and obviously our bodies are an important part of our experience. Um, but it does, I mean, it does relate to, you know, ordinary matter as well. Um, but it's particularly focused on uh, the body. It's said that all materiality is derived from the four elements, earth, water, fire and air in different ways. Um, and the two kind of what really stand out in the list of, of different kinds of group of materiality are the five senses. So that means the, um, the bit of materiality or matter that's the sensitive bit of the eye, for example, or in relation to the other senses. And um, you could say qualities that things have that makes them visible or audible or have a smell or a taste or give us a sensation of touch. 
Um, so that kind of focus in, in Rupa on the senses and the sense objects, it really focuses on you. We have this, um, uh, a sense like an eye and many things around us have this quality of being visible. And then we have some, some consciousness, some chitta, which is seeing and it's the coming together of those three things the the um this kind of reacting that happens between something in our eye and some quality of the things around us that with the mind create the experience of seeing and similarly hearing and so on and then the um kinds of materiality listed, which are called subtle materiality. Um, so I won't, I'm not going to go through, but I'll perhaps just mention um, some of them. One of them is, is um, or two of them are, are called bodily and vocal intimation. So this is to do with the, the materiality when, when we're communicating consciously or unconsciously whether it's through voice which isn't just speech um, but communicate or with our bodies that um, change in the materiality or materiality we said that comes into being um, by which consciously or unconsciously we communicate with other beings um, is um, an example of um, subtle materiality that's listed. Um, food or nutritive essence is another one that um, says that materiality has a um, uh, quality of being possibly nutriment for somebody or something. That's clearly true of our bodies. Um, and of lots of other things as well. And also other subtle materiality is listed as things like impermanence, that it, that it has the quality of impermanence, um, of coming into being and um, decaying. So there's a, a variety of these more subtle materialities that are mentioned, but it's very much, focused, as I say, on the body, on our experience. So it's looking at matter in terms of how we experience in the same way that the, you know, talking about the, the chitta and chitasakas, it's, it's again about our experience, trying to, or describing aspects of how we experience whatever we experience. And the same here for the body. And then we have um, the last one, Nibbana. And it's not very much, it doesn't seem to be very much that one can say about Nibbana. Um, I wouldn't find it easy to say very much about Nibbana, but I happened to come across this, which I thought was rather lovely from um, on the internet. Um, a monk, I think, called um, Bhikkhu Nyana Tusita, which I thought was very fitting, had, has apparently uh, worked through lots and lots and lots and lots of texts and made a note of all the different descriptions of Nibbana, um, which are not necessarily these words, but he then went on to group them um, and this is he group these are the groups that um, he came up with so um, I won't but there's for example in the first one uh, in um, a text the unexcelled state of sublime peace or in um, security the refuge, the unexcelled security, the shelter, that which is free from fear, that which has no fear from anywhere, the shelter, and so on. So he, he found all these many references to Nibbana in many, many texts. Um, 
and so I've just listed the headings there and I thought that was I found that quite helpful because when people do attempt to talk about Nibbana or how they feel about it or think about it and it's clearly not something that can be um, described by one word and we did you know we may at different times I could personally I like freedom uh, but I know lots of people like peace and everyone probably likes happiness so um, so this it's just rather lovely to see all these different um, ways in which it's talked about in the text um, so that's the fourth Paramata Dhamma Nibbana so I thought I'd do next was um, look at some something from the Dhamma Sangani, from the first book of the Abhidhamma, um, which um, happened to be in the chanting book. So um, that's what I think we'll look at next. Um, But I think it's it's also it's interesting to reflect why, um, as um, why the Buddhist teachings are described in the Abhidhamma way as well as the Sutta way is quite interesting because um, I mean maybe it'll be clearer when we um, we look at some examples. But although it may be to some extent from the little I've said that it's uh, talking, um, I guess it's, it, it's a very different way of giving a teaching than talking about people and places and questions about things. Uh, so it's looking, well, there's a few things really. I mean, it's, it's looking at, um, structure perhaps now actually I think we'll just look at a bit more maybe what I'm trying to say will be a bit clearer so we are going to look at something let's look first at something from the chanting book again so is this Martika which I think is on page 39 now we don't have a translation in the in the chanting book we just have the Pali so I've found a translation so this martika that begins the Dhamma Sangani, the word martika is, I think, associated or related to the word matrix and also mother and womb. And there's a sense in which this martika um, is like the, um, the thing from which all the rest of the Abhidhamma arises and comes into being. I mean, it looks like a table of contents, which you, you can certainly um, see it in that way. But the fact that they use this word martika, it's more, um, and it's also going back to um, maybe the sense of the Buddha at the time of his enlightenment, thinking what, what is it that people need to know? And the very first thing here in the Martika is which states are good, which are bad, and which are indeterminate, neither good nor bad, or it's skillful or unskillful, the, um, um, the Pali, the, the uh, other words for good and bad. States is the word Dhammas, uh, so we have Kusala Dhamma, Akusala Dhamma, and Abhyakata Dhamma, which you may remember from some chanting. And the Dhammas, um, in this case, are chittas. So it's saying uh, which chittas are skillful, which are not skillful, and which are neither. And this um, is the first triplet. So we've got three things. And the Martika, the Dhamma Sankini Martika, has 22 triplets. So 
you can see the second one is um, Dhamma is associated with three kinds of feelings. So that again will be which chittas have pleasant feeling, which chittas have pleasant feeling, which chittas have neutral feeling. And then something about which that won't be just chitters, that can be other things which are results, um, some kinds of rupa, for example, or dhammas that cause results, or ones that are neither. Um, and so on. Here, um, grasped at, now perhaps we go for this one states that are defiled and objects of defilement so things sort of unskillful things um which one can think about in an unskillful way um or things which are not unskillful but can be thought of in an unskillful way and things that are neither and i think this is i thought quite an interesting one because um you know the first is kind of um seems that seems fairly straightforward and then um things that are not defiled so it, it talks about for example things like jhana um which is not defiled but we can have attachment and other things in relation to jhana so they can be even though they're, they're free from all bad things they can be give rise to greed, hate, or delusion. Um, and the only things that are neither um, unskillful and don't give rise to it in any way are the, the paths and fruits, so the, the, the mind or the chitters of beings who are um, found freedom, if only for a moment, who've, who've reached that point, who've reached the path. Um, and then we have things from the practice. So it's there talking really about which jitters have vitaka and vichara, which jitters only have vichara, which jitters have neither. And then something more about uh, piti and sukha. So these were things that thinking in terms of what, what's useful and helpful for us, um, that these are, are what's in the list. Um, let's say there's 22 of these. They're then followed by, I think, 100 um, pairs, where there's just dhammas that are A or B, um, and a couple of other things. Um, at the end, that makes up the, the Matika for the Dhamma Sangini. And then when you look at the, um, the first paragraph of, of the Dhamma Sangini, um, you find, uh, so you're starting with this first triplet, which Dhammas are good or skillful, which are unskillful, which are neither. And that answering that question takes up about two thirds of the Dhamma Sangini. So that's answered in huge detail. And then the rest of the Dhamma Sangini um, goes on to talk about the others. So very much the Matika and I think the, the working out of that first triplet of what's, what's skillful, what's not skillful, what's neither, is clearly very very central part of both the Dhamma Sangini and the rest of the Abhidhamma. So this is the first, the very beginning of the um, um, Dhamma Sangani. Um, so we've got here, um, this is the beginning of answering the question which Dhammas are good or skillful which are unskillful, which are neither. So it starts off looking at all the dhammas which are said to be good or skillful. And it starts off, the sensuous universe means um, the world of the senses. So this world rather than um, a world of jhana, for example. 
and um, it's saying which we've got the word thought, which is another translation for chitta. Um, and it says that there are eight main kinds of chittas in the world of the senses, which are skillful. And this is the first one. So, um, so it's answering the question, which are the states that are good? So when a good thought or chitta concerning the world of the senses has risen, which is accompanied by gladness associated with knowledge and has as its object, a sight, a sound, a smell, a taste, a touch, a mental state or whatever. Then there is, and then it goes on to list all the chittasakas which um, arise with that first chitta. Um, so if we look at this list of chittasakas, it goes on as I think in this one, 56 chittasakas. And I've put some spaces um, between them just to make a bit more sense. So there's the first five. Now the thought, we have chitta here arising, because it doesn't say um, these are the chittasakas, but in fact all of these would be called chittasakas really, apart from possibly chitta itself, but that occurs in the list because that's what, that's what arises or occurs at that time when this um, skillful thought comes into being. And um, that seems an obvious group. It sort of uh, is obviously related to the, the aggregate. So we've got contact with whatever the object is, which is, if it was a physical thing, would, would be related to the body. Feeling, um, so there's contact occurring, comes into being. Perception means we recognize or label it in some way. And then we have some intention in relation to it and, um, and the chitta itself. Um, and then the next group, we can see um, the uh, jhana factors, in fact, that's they've used a translation application for um, Vitaka. So we've got um, apply, uh, applied thinking, sustained thinking, joy, um, happiness, and one-pointedness. So to varying degrees, depending on the jitter, um, those are present. So I think the first five, the first five are always there. From then on, it varies a bit, um, depending what kind of mind is being described. Um, and then we have a collection of faculties, the five that we're familiar with, faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. And then the faculty of thought um, here, uh, or mind, faculty of mind, the faculty of gladness and the faculty of life. Uh, so that means some kind of mental life. So we have those faculties. Um, then we have path factors, not all of them, all there apart from livelihood, right view, right intention, right endeavor, right, right concentration. These are all said to be there. And then the powers, so the powers are a further development of the faculties of faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom, but also the power of conscientiousness and fear of blame, uh, which are said to be to protect us um, from harm, those two powers. And then, uh, the roots, so lack of greed, lack of hate, lack of dullness. Um, so in other non-greed, non-hate and wisdom. And then the same thing said using slightly different words, lack of covetousness, lack of malice and right view again. Um, so those roots are there 
described in two ways. And then conscientiousness and fear of blame occur um, again, as well as being separately from being described as powers. And then we have what some people will have come across the six pairs. Um, so serenity in mind and people varies whether people take this to be mind and the body of Chittasaka's mental factors is another um, translation of um, Chittasaka's or just mind and body and similarly lightness um, plasticity, facility, fitness, and direction. So those six pairs are said to be there. And then at the end, this list of um, six, so we've got mindfulness, we've got intelligence, which is another synonym for wisdom. We have quiet, which is another synonym for concentration. Intuition, another synonym for wisdom. Grasp, which is a synonym for effort, and balance, which is a synonym for concentration. So you could say, um, so no, so all these good, good things are there uh, whenever there's a, a moment of generosity, kindness, um, wisdom, uh, whatever different kinds of skillful mind that we have that those 56 qualities are also present um, and which is quite amazing really uh, but there's a couple of things maybe it's worth saying about about that the re there's obviously repetitions in um in more summary forms of this they would leave out the repetitions but the diamond you know and just put faith in once and just put effort in once but it's it's interesting having these things um listed in different places in slightly different ways um and in fact if you when it goes on to talk about each of these it the, the way it does that is actually to list synonyms so whether it's faith or energy or mindfulness or lots of different Pali words that are used so one thing that's going on here is um, translators attempting to find different suitable words for um, the part these different Pali words so self-collectedness that's one for concentration They've got concentration um, there, um, right concentration, power concentration, and then some of these at the end, which are to do with concentration, which is quiet and balance. And there are others as well listed. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's helpful to, to be aware when we've got these lists, like this and, and I think Abhidhamma is rather famous for lists. Um, I think it's helpful to think of them in terms of something which is alive, which it obviously is because these are all part of our experience. They're not static things. They're all things which are alive. They're all things which are um, capable of being developed. So you could in just a, a vague, only just, I don't know the right sort of words, but only just skillful chitter or mind of this kind. All of these things are there, but maybe they're not all fully developed. And then at the other extreme, you have somebody like the Buddha or an Arahat in which these things are all fully developed. And we've got everything in between. And, and really practice is very much about developing many of these qualities um, and I was thinking, I was trying to think of an analogy and um, a horticultural one came to mind. So um, the mind went to hollyhocks, I like hollyhocks. So 
if you're going to say you've got hollyhock, a hollyhock or hollyhocks in your garden, it might be just a little um, thing that's barely come out of the ground, um, above the ground, but you can recognise it by the, the leaves and the, the form of the stem and the size of it. So you know there's hollyhock there. There's no denying there's hollyhock there. And then if you think of, if you're familiar with hollyhocks, how they grow, they get taller, they get more leaves, they get branches, they get flowers, they get really quite tall until you've got this amazing plant covered in flowers that's really huge. So those are all hollyhocks. They all have the same name, hollyhock. So with all of these, we're talking about experience, something that's alive. Um, so they're not like it's here, it's not here. There's just the quality of that thing is there and um, the development of it just will vary um, as time goes by or from time to time how, how, how well developed each of these things are and, and giving things you know talking about um, mindfulness as a faculty also as a power also as a path factor gives another sense of um, the possibilities for all of these things and the way that they can happen. Um, and so this first good thought, first good sitter, chitter, um, interestingly, um, when they come on to talk about jhana, um, the description of the first, the chitta that's first jhana is um, the bit at the beginning is different because it's a different situation. Jhana, but when it lists the chittasakas for first jhana, it's identical to this. So it means that it's a bit like the hollyhocks, really. Some of these qualities which are there in a the kind of um, thought or mind we might have randomly during the day is very much the basis of, say, first jhana, um, when that development happens, but not something that's for, so foreign or something that we don't know about. So there's a sense in which we know about all of these things um, at some level. And in fact, the first moment of... Um, Dream entry, uh, when when somebody reaches that um, first experience of, of freedom or, or nibbana, again the list is exactly the same, apart from one thing. Um, all of those things are there in just the same way as with this first chitta, but there's also the um, an extra faculty of, um, I think it's something like um, a faculty of I shall come to know the unknown, I think it's how it's translated. So it's having, having experienced this previously unknown thing, there's obviously some awareness or knowledge that more is going to be known about that. Um, but, it, but otherwise, all the Chittasakas um, are listed in just the same way as with this one. So, um, now then, I think we might do a short practice or a bit of a practice now if people are happy with that. Um, and what I was thinking was um, that we would, if to start with, people um, spent maybe about 10, 15 minutes doing whatever practice they feel like, whether it's breathing practice or meta practice or something, um, whatever they feel 
um, would be helpful. And then um, follow that by uh, a Chicharuni practice. Um, so I'll give some instructions for uh, the Chicharuni practice. So if you'd like to settle yourselves down, I don't have a bell, so. Whatever you've been paying attention to, the body. And these can be changing all the time. Awareness of this, awareness of that. The feeling. There's something which is aware of all these many experiences. might be aware of how the mind was just now while you were practicing. Aware of thoughts. And then we'll turn the attention to, from the awareness from the chitta to the chitasikas. Uh, I'll mention some, so these are qualities perhaps of mind. Um, so again, the feeling, whatever feeling is present, Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral is a chitasika. If there's a, a feeling of um, or quality of energy or concentration or mindfulness, those are chitasikas. Maybe some of the things from the practice, vitaka or vichara, you may be aware of. or some of the, um, the roots, um, quality of uh, non-greed, or, or, or attachment, both the possible, or kindness, or ill will, or, or wisdom or dullness. These things are all coming and going. Mostly they don't stay around very long. Or 
or maybe some of the, the six pairs. You might notice they're there or they're not there, lightness, uh, serenity. All, the, all their opposites. Oh. So many, many different qualities coming and going. And if then we turn to the body. Perhaps for the, um, maybe start with the, the five senses, a sense of touch. So we have the experience of touch in whatever form, in different parts of the body, those physical sensations. So there's something of the body which is sensitive to that whatever the touch is related to or whatever is touching. So lots and lots of different sensations in the body which you could call touch, internal and external. And also sounds, something in the body which can experience sound and things outside somewhere creating them and then the experiencing of, of hearing. And then Nibbana, so I thought I'll just mention some of those epithets and perhaps there might be one that resonated with you. And you could turn your mind, you might like to turn your mind to, so it might be peace or Nibbana's quality of security and freedom from fear or shelter or happiness, freedom, stainless, Our quality of truth, coolness of being the highest. So, some quality related to Nibbana. And then coming back to the 
breath and the body. And the contact of the body, the touch. And finish the practice. And then there was just one more thing I was going to say just to finish, um, which is related to um, when we work with or study, um, not just Abhidhamma actually, it doesn't just apply to Abhidhamma, um, but te text I think, or, or theory maybe, that's not what I mean, I don't know. Um, kind of aware that I don't know we, we live in a, a world of information and I, there's not really this material isn't really what you'd call information and I think um, what certainly what I found most helpful you know if you're looking at a bit of text or a, a, a theory topic of some kind um, it isn't a matter of trying to get hold of it all, make sense of it all, uh, kind of grab it all. Often there's maybe just one thing that um, has meaning or significance for you at that time. And, and that's the important thing about that material for you at that time. It's not a matter of getting hold of it or thinking you've got to understand all of this or all of that. It's a means to an end, um, so it's, it's a matter of what's helpful. Um, and I was thinking about, um, I guess this was particularly in relation to the Abhidhamma, but it could easily be Sutra as well. I was thinking about, um, I guess, more in the past, but um, when books were not so available, the monks and I guess the nuns would have chanted Abhidharma texts and Sutta texts. And they wouldn't probably have had much idea, certainly start to have a clue what any of it meant, that they would have been chanting it. And it, it may have been just an odd word, an odd Pali word from the chanting that stuck in their minds. And at some point they might have asked somebody about it. Um, so it's like the sense of something, there's a whole mass of something, but some bit of it just jumps out at you and it's something that you feel like thinking more about or talking about or discussing or something. So I think we have to, uh, it's good to let go of the sense of, uh, yeah, we somehow got to get hold of it all. Um, I mean, I don't know, I suppose I, I quite like chanting, but I was thinking of the, I think it's in the um, Pachayas. There's something that quite often, I mean, it's just Chitta Chitta Sika Dhamma. For some reason, I get this refrain going through my head sometimes. Um, you know, these things happen. Uh, and I'm sure other people have had the same when they've been chanting things. Just an odd word that sticks. I might not know what it means, but maybe it has some significance at that time. So I think we need that approach when we're working with theory, Abhidhamma and other kinds of theory. So I think that's all I've got to say. I've gone on quite a long time. So um, thank you for being patient. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I think someone's ahead there.
I just wanted to say I, I can understand some things I didn't understand before, which I could uh, elaborate on later, but, but thank you. So we'll see if, uh, who would like to ask a question. And I think... Could I ask a question, please? Oh, there we are, Fran. Yes. Yes, go yeah. ahead. Um, when we see lists like that, often we think there's hierarchies in them, like the first is the most important and so forth. H how do you see that set of four of the Abhidharma? It started oh with two. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, I, one of the images that came to mind for me, and you, you, well, you talked about the way that something was born, or you know, the um, that it, yeah, it was born, and um, I, an image that came to mind was like a fan, you know, opening a fan. <laughs> so, yes, you, if you think of a, a fan, there is, um, there is that point where it opens. So that first point is really important, but it is a fan, so it's four things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anyway, it just made me think about, yeah, about why why chitta comes first um, and is because could one could one imagine beginning with rupa it, for example you know mm. so i just wondered what thoughts you had around that um well i, I don't know uh, who's to say um I guess, but I guess that, you know, the way that these things are talked about, mind, um, it seems, you know, materiality is part of our existence, but I think it's not said to be something that can be developed, whereas the mind is, um, and things to do with the mind are something that can be developed. So maybe from that point of view, the, the things to do with the mind come first. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I can't, what they say, but I think, you know, the other is just something that we, um, yeah, that we can know about Rupa, but we can't do very much about it really. Uh, yeah, I don't know, what about you? <laughs> what do you think? Well, I suppose I was thinking a bit, uh, following on also from uh, Richard's talk on dependent origination and the the way that the if one can talk about the mind or, or the impulse to be is sort of the basis and all else follows mm, yeah yeah so you, yeah that 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 kind of made sense to why they were in yeah mm, yeah isn't that the um rosie would know this isn't that the first verse and valerie i don't know if valerie's here the first verse of the dhammapada about mind being the forerunner <laughs> I think it is. That's what the Dhamma Pad does, according <laughs> <Yeah>. to Rosie. <laughs> With you know, if Chitta is part of consciousness, you know, we would have to have consciousness first before there would be Rupa, because without consciousness, you wouldn't have consciousness of, of Rupa. Mm. That's true. Yeah. So we need need that to know about the Rupa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, seems like a good answer as well. Uh, um, 
they also say in Paticca Sangpada that mind and body are mutually related. So for mind to have life, we need the support of the body. But to know the body, we need the mind. So in some senses, you know, um, I don't know if there's a first or not, because the pacha, the condition you mentioned in the chanting thing, it says that they are mutually related. They are supporting each other. Um, anya manya. So, um, by the way, but it's also true that Buddha says mind is the forerunner. But without the body, the mind won't be able to exist because the breath in the body helps the mind to have life. <laughs> so mm. in that sense, I don't know if we can say first or second or anything like that, do you think? <laughs> well, you, know, you can and you I mean, yes, I think it's much of, you know, we can do, we can do both, I think. Yes, and, and I mean, you can have consciousness uh, moving, leaving the body, can't you? The mind stream will mm. leave the body, mm. the body will pass away at death material yeah. and the mind stream will continue mm. then, you know take a new form unless it's nirvana <laughs> then it won't take a new form mm. we shall find out <laughs> one day <laughs> what happens <laughs> somebody's hey, jackie Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. I really enjoyed that uh, practice of just being aware of the body <laughs> in different ways. Um, the, the list of four are interesting because the first is terribly important. It's like in the four foundations of mindfulness. You really need the body. And I liked what people were saying, that you need the consciousness first. The usual pattern in Buddhist lists is that you have a three and then a fourth that somehow encompasses everything or goes beyond it, rather as Usha was saying, there isn't any element that is not important, if you see what I mean. And that, so in the four foundations of mindfulness, you have mindfulness of dhammas as encompassing everything. So my understanding is the first is very important but it's the last element which is often where it's leading to going back to Fran's comment about a hierarchy mm. so equanimity is the sum of all the Brahma Viharas and mindfulness of Dhammas is the sum of all the other mindfulnesses so Nibbana is somehow the fourth one that sort of steps back to another level from the other three which mm. Pointed out are all needed, and that's and, and, quite yeah. happening in, 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 in Buddhist lists. And sort of developed out of the first three. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's how we experience it, and that was just one thing I put in the pot. <laughs> I wanted to say what it was that um, I understood that I hadn't quite. Fully, fully appreciated before, and that was um, when you talked about the um, Buddha after enlightenment and the seven weeks, um, the realization of what was uh, known and experienced, uh, and, and getting a feeling for that. And, and I realized that the Abhidharma is like going deep beneath the surface of things, you know, like really going into what really, really is is happening in your mind and your body and the interaction between them um, uh, uh, to such an extent um, that it, it's known in a different kind of way. Um, I suppose it's that tendency I, mean, I want to know um, what's beyond what's, what it's all about. And although the suttas are very uplifting and they do tell you how to live and they do make it very concrete and real, there's a sense with Abhidharma it, it just goes um, into into the depths and the detail and so on, and that's why it's not just for specialists again. You know that like philosophical kind of uh, debate. It's really about what really is, and yet that so that's that's what I appreciated. Really. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right because there's something in the mind that does want to know. Like you say, what's behind or 
something you know that what you were saying i think it's something that something in the mind that that needs that from time to time i mean maybe not all the time but to, it it's just how we're made really yeah. This thing. Yeah, yeah. I did wonder if one could choose, you know, when we were talking about they say the skillful skill and in the practice I was more aware of that. It was very good to do it then. Um kind of if you know there's a skillful and an unskillful and you've kind of learnt about it and then you experience it, it almost seems as if it in Abhidharma it inevitably flows like the fan or it sort of, you know, kind of proliferates somehow from one to many. Um, and then, uh, but then if one could choose, can you, it's about, uh, I know you can in a way, but um, on the other hand, <laughs> uh, can you, <laughs> once you're on track, you know, with unskillful, it inevitably kind of go on, um, or, or does the Abhidharma fight give you a way of switching to the skillful? <laughs> I yeah. will you probably know a lot about that from practice really i would have thought um anyway mm. uh, but there might be there might be things where say if you were looking at the something in the um abhidhamma about the unskillful states there might be something that kind of went or oh, you know some something that oh that's what i keep doing you know, you recognize something that might, yeah, something that would just highlight something yeah. that you was you knew but was a bit below the yeah. surface of your and and, and it, oh, bing, you know. So I think it can be really helpful that way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not, as I say before, not that just something that's the thing for you at that time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful talk. It was very helpful and very. I dare say enlightening. Um, can I ask you, those lists that you put up, would they be available to download at some point? I always get completely, even now, I, I, it seems to go in one ear and out the other, the list of faculties and you know what. It seems to be an easy way of remembering, but I find it a bit confusing. So something like downloading them would be I think I don't know. Veronica may have the answer to that by email. Then, if anyone would like that, if they ask me, I could send it to them. We could do it that way, Liz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Rather than a general one for everyone. Yeah. We could. Is do that what is that the sort of thing you meant, Liz? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, Liz, okay. if you. Yeah, I, I will do it. I'll send it to you if Jackie sends it to me. Okay. Okay. Are you in the sunshine? Me? Liz? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in the deepest, darkest Fulham. You've just spoilt my illusion of you in Thailand. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I'm in light it. <laughs> Thank you. Can I, can I go back to uh, the consciousness? Uh, I've been thinking about it because it's a Dhamma point I wish to just ask really or say. Um, as far as I know, when the uh, consciousness becomes free without the mind, uh, without the body, uh, in that relinking consciousness, in Abhidharma it says vinyana, not chitta. So the way Jackie was talking, uh, you know, Chitta is the one who's always got an object. So it occurs when there's an object, but, but when there's a moment of dying, there's a consciousness which is not called Chitta, but Vinyana, isn't it? Which is seeking for a rebirth or seeking for materiality. And it may sound technical, but I've always pondered about this question because it seems to have a different quality from Chitta, whose main function is the interaction between an object and the mm. um, mind things or experience. Whereas Vinyana, um, the word is something to do with knowing and consciousness in different directions or something like that, isn't it? So yeah. just, just so that we don't feel confused that Chitta, as far as I know, doesn't exist by itself, or not to be pretentious or anything, just because um, the Buddha seems to use different words for 
these things and there might be a reason between chitta and vijnana which is a very deep question i think mm. however he does use it doesn't he <laughs> i know it's it's an interesting question i mean there's there's chitta and there's vijnana as you yeah. say and also mano yeah. and what and certainly um in the Dhamma Sangani, in the, you know, they, they give a register, a, a list of synonyms for each of these things. Both Mano and Vijnana are in the, the register for Chitta. Mm -hmm. So the implication there is, that, you know, on some occasions it's, well, for whatever reason, it's, they're sort of shades of the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. noticed I mean, on because I've had similar thoughts. So I've noted you know, if they're talking about the or in the lists for the four foundations of mindfulness, the fourth one they use chitta, mm. but for the aggregates, the consciousness aggregate, they use vinyana. Yes, yeah. you know. So it, but quite what precisely the shades of difference <laughs> are maybe harder to pin down, but. And I don't know, I mean, I, I did wonder whether I was trying to be too scientific about it and trying to pin it down, you know, this is chitta, this is, and I'm not sure, now I'm not sure how, and I mean, and these, you know, these words have been used over a long period of time. So I don't absolutely know, but it's interesting how they occur, these different words, and then mano again, mm -hmm. you know, in different, different um, places. But I don't have um, yes. enough breadth of whatever to to be able, you know. Can, but it's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only to complete because vinyana is not always supposed to occur in seeking an object, whereas, as far as I understand, of course, I haven't read everything or practiced it all. But chitta is more in connection with, and it needs to have an object for a chitta to occur. You know, there's an object, uh, our base, and then the contact, Vasa, the first one, appears with seven universals and so on. That's how I understood it. You know, mm. don't, know, yeah. don't know really for sure. <laughs> it's interesting, just, just bussing in there, because it's something I've been looking at um, myself for a few weeks. Um, partly because um, I'm talking about the aggregates next week, <laughs> and <they're> obviously consciousness <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's very interesting that there are these three different words for consciousness, and they seem to crop up in different contexts, yet at the same time to be kind of interchangeable as well. Mm -hmm. And it seems very difficult to kind of get a handle on what exactly is the difference between them, or yeah. if there is even any yeah. difference between yeah. them and it seems that um vinyana seems to crop up in in connection with um sensory con consciousness if you like in the sense of it being um the um awareness of a sensory object including the mind and thoughts as well so it seems to have that connotation but then it's also interestingly there's um also the mention of vinyana as having a kind of a life force quality to it yeah, as yeah. well as it's what kind of animates the body in a sense um mm. and then mano is another word which seems to have a more all-encompassing kind of meaning <laughs> and chitter again seems to have more this kind of heart base as well so there seems to be some kind of difference in quality between them but mm. yet the use of them is not always no. <laughs> so so specific i don't think no, I know when I was thinking about it, you know, with, um, I mean, not just for, for Chitta, but for these, these registers in the, in the Dhamma Sangini, where they give different synonyms for something, like with Chitta, they also, you know, include heart and Vinyana and, and um, Mano and so on. And I, I, I came back to the Hollyhocks and I thought they were like different, this is probably a bit stupid, but anyway, different varieties of Hollyhocks. <laughs> You know, they're all clearly hollyhock, but they're... But Sarah, that, yeah. sorry, sorry, Jackie, I could see Sarah's waving there, so I, I, I didn't... All right, know. good. Oh, uh, thank you, Jackie, Usher and Sarah. I really enjoyed <laughs> the discussion about that, and I haven't really thought about it much, but what popped into my mind um, was back to Usher's point, I thought was really interesting, that independent origination 
vinyana arises before name and form, which yeah. rather picks up yeah. some yeah. point that um, maybe there is some sense of a kind of consciousness that arises before the split into Nama and Rupa and thereby uh, Chitta and Rupa. You know, that there's some apprehension mm. before it goes. Mm. Except, except that, um, sorry to, but um, I'd wondered about Nama, but Nama doesn't occur in the register for Chitta. Uh, no. What, so what, I, I thought what, maybe it's something, whether it's something slightly different, I don't know. What, no, what I meant was, was rather it vindicated Usha, Usha's point that there is a slight difference. Yeah. Nama yeah. is equated to Chitta and Chittasaka and Rupa is, is equated to Rupa. So Chitta and Chittasaka are Nama. Um, That's Nama, all right, okay, yeah. fair enough. So okay. It's really just to say ah, that, uh, okay. that, that struck a bell when Usha said that because it's mm. puzzling the difference yeah. that yeah. there's maybe some sort of sense of a kind of consciousness arising before the Chitta Chittasaka Rupa split some sort of apprehension yeah. but I don't know I don't know that was only just conjecture so that's that would happen when Rupa's got involved wouldn't it because it's Nama and Rupa coming together Mm. Mm. So maybe chitta is a product of an object in a way that, that, that when mm. once, once there is an object you have chitta. But I don't know, but I enjoyed hearing um, also Sarah's uh, discussion of the difference between mm. it, it, It's always been a puzzle to me and what Sarah said I felt sounded really accurate. Yeah. But then, yes, we're still left with the question how vinyana comes out of ignorance, but I think, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call me mm. at that point, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, now, and um, I think that's usually when we finish. Um, unless someone is, is really wanting to have a last word, I think we should bring it to a close. Um, so, um, I wonder, Jackie, how should we bring it to a close this time? Would we like to do a, a blessing chant? Or something? I'm sure. <laughs> who, would, who would like? Tracy, would you like to chant a blessing, please? If, if you unmute. Thank you. couldn't find myself to unmute, but I'm here now. <laughs> Thank you. Bawati Sabba Mangalan Rakanti Sabba Dewata Sabba Buddha Nibawena Sada Suti Bawanti Day Bawati Sabba Mangalan Rakanti Sabba Dewata Sabha Dhamha Nubhava Na Sada Suti Bhavan Today Bhava Te Sabha Mangalan Rakam Te Sabha Devata Sabha Sangha Nubhava Na Sada Suti Bhavan Today Thank you. 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 Thank you.